Hello and welcome to part 16.2 of a series where I'm building a protogen head. When we left off last time I had just finished doing the major assembly of the main head covering uh, but still needed to do final touches to it. Uh, as you can see it's still not attached. Uh, I needed to give this one more wash and before I do that I'm waiting for these ears to fully dry. I put them on earlier today had to redo the glue because it didn't really work very well, so I want to let these sit for a good amount of time before I give it a nice wash. So previously the zipper on the back of this was kind of just way too long and the front wasn't connected. And I've since resolved both of those. You can see the zipper is trimmed to be flush with the bottom. I had to add another part here on the front to actually connect the sides together because they were just not going to reach. But since then, I've gotten a decent amount of work here because I had no idea how to do deal with the ears. And this, you know, that worked well enough. It's not great. I would have made them a little bit bigger if I do it again. But it, it'll suffice. Um, I'm feeling pretty good at Sunday night right now. I'm not really going to get much work done on this. I think the only thing I'm going to do tonight is get my laptop set up to be able to program this because I have made adjustments to the locations of this stuff on the screen. I just haven't put it on the controller yet. So I need to get my laptop able to program it and then I can do that. Um, if I sound a little bit different this time, it's because I'm using the camera's built-in mic after that issue with the microphone last time. I just don't want to deal with it. I don't have any other backup audio because I'm doing single camera operation here. So what I did for the ear blanks was I went through the scrap from when I cut the other pieces out and I had I believe three areas there that were big enough to just use a scrap and then I had to go get three more areas from fresh latex and I made three ear blanks because I wanted to just be prepared in case I fucked the first one up I didn't this is actually the first one I made so it is a little bit fucky but I didn't go all the way to put the red on it. I was comfortable enough to just do that on the other one. So I, I did the, these rough cuts to just make sure they were at least big enough for the, the template that I had made up. Uh, cut them, washed them, you know, blah, blah, blah. Glued them together, shiny sides out. Uh, there's definitely like air bubbles in all of them, which is annoying but uh, what I did was I took a pin and popped them and just fl flushed them down to make it less bad and then I had a smaller template that I used for the red and I also prepared three of the red and since I didn't need the third one I went ahead and used that prepared piece of latex for this part so I wasn't sure if I was going to do that I decided I might as well because I had the latex ready and I would never be able to do that once it's permanently attached because I can't really roll it well enough, which is gonna also make attaching hair in the future annoying, but I'll deal with it. So I just did those up. Three layers of latex. The red is thinner than this stuff. You just scraps from the red. It's very, very thin. And then kind of scored the bottoms with little slits, kind of like this piece of paper here, which is incredibly overexposed, but just did that so I could still have a bit of a curve to this and have the bottom area still fan out, which admittedly didn't work very well on here because the latex is super floppy and didn't really want to give a curve, but it still worked enough. I got a bend in the middle to have them hold themselves in a shape like this uh, and not just flop over. and definitely glued these down. Um, I also spent some time the other night working on the strap here. Uh, cut it and then so like permanently attach these together but not being able to adjust these. Permanently attach those unadjustable. On this end this is permanently attached unadjustable but over here this is adjustable with my the little piece that I 3D printed to like hold the slack and on the end here I just folded it over a couple of times and sewed it down so it wouldn't come back through here. So it's, it's 
semi-permanently attached. I mean, if you undo the threading, but you can do undo the threading for all of them, so whatever. Point is, this side's adjustable. This should be adjusted fairly well. I did some testing with it without anything else here, and it mostly worked, so, or mostly was sized correctly. So this, this will work. Um, it'll definitely work a lot nicer with the latex on here as well, kind of holding it in place. Um, that is the majority of the status updates that I have right now. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to glue this down. And after that, I think it's mainly like do a little bit of polish on the outside and powder on the inside to keep it from sticking to itself. Uh, I need to finalize all the wiring here and screw the board into all the mounts that are in here. Uh, I just put it back in there because I needed to count the pixels for how I needed to adjust the things. But I, I'm feeling pretty good. What else did I do? Oh, I, I had to figure out which way those wires for the capacitive touch connect because I was just completely... I, I tried it both ways and tried to remember which way it was and because they both kind of worked and I'm pretty sure this is the way I intended it. So I marked on, you can barely see it, the plastic there, that little like strape of Sharpie next to the um, thing on this, to the right is like pin one marker. There's also an up arrow back there because that's the side that is up. And I did similar marks on the bottom here for uh, where all the buttons are on the other side. Just so, and there's a down, just so there'd be a, a marker somewhere of what does what. Um, I might need to glue this wire and this wire like to the frame here somewhere out of the way. I need to figure out where to stick this button at the bottom. Um, still things to do with the wiring, but it's mostly cosmetic, keeping the stuff out of the way. That's probably Tuesday. Tomorrow is going to be get this glued and be done. Okay, continuation of uh, whatever part that just was. Very brief. Uh, as you can see, it's basically all put together. And everything seems to be working well enough. Uh, I glued this all onto the frame earlier. Could have done a little bit better job, like right around here. So there's a big fold, and unfortunately, that's also where the menu touchpad is. So it's very finicky to get it to register a menu press, and that's just with bare hands. So when I'm wearing gloves, that's probably going to be very difficult. Yeah, but the back one right here, well, it was working, but oh yeah, there's backs over. Come on, let me just. I know you can't see the internal screen, but I can, and it's definitely not reacting. Nope, that's the other one. I might just change it to use the uh, other one there for menu, but menu is like right around here somewhere, and I can't find it right now. There it goes. So I can go here, and then hopefully, yeah, and then get that, and then get that, and then do that, and turn on the animation. So, you know, it's working. Uh, it's just not as, uh, I, I goofed when putting the latex on and it's not as good as it should have been or could have been. Then if I hit back there, it'll stop. Uh, you might not be able to hear it, but I do have a little five volt fan in there blowing in to try to get a little bit of circulation. It's rather loud when I'm wearing the head. It was very quiet before I put it in there. So maybe it'll get quieter when I actually glue it down because it's just resting in there because I was trying to figure out where to put it. Um, these little cheap things are not properly mounted. I forgot to put them in before I put the head on, and it took me a good two or three minutes to put it on because I hadn't done it yet. Um, so I didn't want to take it off just to put those in, but I'll adjust those and put them in better. I don't know what I'm going to do for that long term, but just solid panels are fine for now. Clearly, the, uh, the microphone is working. I changed the gain to be the plus 40 decibels instead of the plus 60 by default. Couldn't find the jumpers I bought a year ago, so I just used the solder pads to bridge it. I can still adjust the sensitivity in software if I need to. Uh, I glued the toggle for the capacitive touch right here on the inside. So I press that to toggle that on and off. I may eventually put some other buttons on here to just control the menu directly without having to worry about the capacitive touch. But I don't need to do that right now. It's kind of a rat's nest of wires in here. I might take it off to show the 
the mess in here, but hey, it's uh, it's done. I need to polish the latex uh, tomorrow because it's already 9.30 tonight, Monday. So I'll do that tomorrow before I pack. And I also need to put a little bit of like powder on the inside to just keep that from sticking to itself. And obviously there's still a lot to do with the software because like there's no no animations other than the mouth moving when I talk. No blinking, no nothing else. And so I need to spend a lot of time on the software some, at some point, but that doesn't need to happen before these cons. Uh, I'm just glad that it is done and I can wear it. I can move my head. It's a little loose, so I'll need to figure that out, but as long as I'm not super active, I'm comfortable with uh, how this feels right now. And I need to give this visor a wash and d deal with like this gap here at the top. But yeah, let me let me take this off and show the the rat's nest of the wires in here right now because it is kind of kind of crazy. So this is the current status of the inside. As you can see, there's a bunch of wires just all shoved all over the place there on the inside. Um, it gets the job done. I can still see well enough. Nothing really obstructs my field of view except the fan wire right here because I haven't figured out exactly where I want to put the fan yet. I got the capacitive touch wires running back over here. I glued one of the ribbon cables for the, the panel return to the top of the inside here so that's out of the way. The power cables are just kind of coiled in there. Um, it's really just this fan cable that I need to figure out uh, exactly what to do with. And you can kind of see the fan down there at the bottom on the uh, little grate at the bottom. Um, oh, you can also see, like, if I'm talking at this normal voice, it's not reacting to me anymore. But if I raise my voice, it still will. So I don't know what that means in a, uh, a loud room. I might have to adjust the sensitivity in the software. I can still do that somewhat easily. Um, there's the capacitive touch toggle button way down there at the bottom. And I'm just powering it from a USB cord that I'm just going to snake out down by my neck into a, in my pocket or something. Um, and you can get a, a better look at how I kind of didn't do a great job right here where there's a big old fold here and it kind of doesn't want to react. You can see the red light blinking. So it's registering back just fine, but if I move over to where menus should be, it's just not. Oh, there, it's kind of picking it up a couple of times. Picked it up once. I also don't know exactly where it is, is the problem. Oh, that's the, that's the other one. So what I might just do is software swap menu and whichever extra button this is, and then only have one extra input on this side. Or maybe I'll put menu and backup both on this side and then just have an extra one over here. I can just tap the cycle stuff through. I don't know. A little bit annoying. Um, really don't want to have to swap those in software because they are kind of labeled on here what they are and I don't want to swap wires around now. Um, and then there's just, there's no, uh, there's no redoing this because it's, it's super glued on. I mean, I could force it to come off, but I really don't want to do that. That'll cause problems. So this is a a me being dumb problem, not a the idea doesn't work. But overall, I'm very happy. It uh, it's mostly done. It's mainly just software stuff that needs to be addressed now. So. I don't know if I'm going to have how much time I'm going to have to wear this at BLFC. I would like to wear it at least once. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the Protogen meetup that's on the schedule. I might have something else going on at that time. Um, if I do make it, cool. If I don't, oh well. But hey, it's done. Finally, a year or something later, it's done enough to wear it. So. Um, if you've been here the whole time, thanks for sticking around. If you join somewhat later, well, glad to have had you as well. There's still going to be many, many more updates on this. I just, as I mentioned, a lot of software stuff and even some more hardware stuff to do, but it's usable. So if you want to see more updates, 
subscribe, stick around. Um, but in the meantime, thanks for watching.